All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you so much for being here this evening. We're also going to be Facebook Live. And I know that some folks are very hesitant about being live when you're doing these types of meetings. So we promise we want to have a very, very open meeting. So we promise not to put you live on Facebook, not have the cameras face you so that you don't be uncomfortable when you're giving your contributions this evening. So thank you again for coming. I hope everyone fared the weather. Thank you. Uh, that just recently passed us uh, with the floods. I hope that there weren't that many damages to your businesses or to your homes. And also the fact that we, are, we didn't have any casualties during the floods, no injuries reported. So thank you so much. Thank to God for that as well. Before we proceed, I know you know who I am, but I am Luce Hodge-Smith, your district representative for the 4th District, and the junior minister for culture and tourism. The purpose of our meeting this afternoon is to give you an update of the things that I have been doing. And believe you me, I've been doing a lot. But I'm not the type of person to go public. I'm so sorry. If this is the type of representative that you need, I will try my best to go public. But I'm not a public person. I like to do things behind the scenes. And most of the things that I'm doing are private to help people. And you don't give people's business outside. And that's the type of person I am. But if you want me to be different, I will be different. I don't do Facebook well. <laughs> I don't do social media well. So you won't be seeing me much on Facebook. Uh, Right now, someone did it with my Facebook page, and they're always calling me, what do you have to put on there? And they have to pull it out of me. But believe you me, I will give the information when it's necessary to give it, and we go public when it's necessary to go public. But I promise you, I am working behind the scenes, okay? So today, we're going to have the purpose of our meeting, as I said, is to give updates on things that have been happening and things that are planned. And at the end, I want you to ask questions, give your contributions, make your recommendations and suggestions so that as a District 4, which is the capital of a territory, will help to improve the areas that we need to improve in. And of course, <clears throat> our rains the other day showed us definitely areas that needs to be addressed. And I know some of you have other concerns and we'll try our best to uh, address them today or we try to plot plans in which to address them because everything doesn't happen overnight. I'd like to introduce, I do have some other folks coming, they are late, but let me introduce my panel here. I start on my far right, Mrs. Janice Edwards, Brathwit Edwards, she is the city manager. Mr. Marcus Solomon, and this is the director for the Department of Waste Management. I do have Mr. Henry Kriki and Ms. Uh, Diane Solomon. They choose to sit there, but when Henry is making his presentation, he will come forward. And they are from the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force Traffic Advisory Committee. And I didn't know there was such an e existing committee until Diane invited me to one of their meetings. And I expect an Honorable Reinemer, the Minister for Communications and Works, and I'm also uh, expecting someone from the Department of Public Works to be present. Allow me to introduce and to announce uh, Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Elvia smith Maduro from the Ministry of Communications and Works. And also in attendance, we have Mr. Gregory Adams. He is the director for the Town and Country Planning Department, along with his, uh, his um, team member, Mr. Foy, also from the Town and Country Planning Department. I recognize the, the staff from the city manager's office. And I also recognize Mr. Brian Davies from the Water and Sewerage Department. They didn't have presentations to make, but they offered to be here because water is an issue, sewerage is an issue, so we'll be able to address some of the concerns that we have in, in the town area. And I'd also like to recognize Mr. Allen from the Department of Waste Management. Uh, anyone else from the government offices that I missed out? But they are here because I cannot do anything without them, okay? I need them to help me to get these off the ground so we have to work collaboratively. Although I am the district representative, I am no use to you without their help. So they agreed to be with me today and come forward and make presentations because I had meeting with, meetings with them and ways in which we want to see things going. And of course, we can always alter our plans according to what is said tonight, okay? Thank you so much for that. 
So just to give you an idea of what I've been doing um, in my five and a half months as your district representative, the activities that I've been doing. As I said before, I've been reaching out, people have been reaching out to me with their assistance that they would need. And again, those kinds of assistance that I've been giving are private. And I don't want to share them today because they're per people's personal business, but I have been assisting behind the scenes. And I don't want anyone to ask me about them because I was told that <laughs> They haven't seen anything that I've done for the five months that I've been the representative, but believe you me, I've been up and going. As a junior minister for culture and tourism, I as, I'm assigned the responsibility of overseeing matters pertaining to the Caribbean Tourism Organization. That's the tourism side of it. And I'm also assigned to coordinate the upcoming culture and tourism month activities. In addition to my ministerial role, I attend meetings, weekly meetings. We have weekly meetings on, on Monday mornings. We have caucus. So I attend those meetings regularly. I've also been present to all the House of Assembly sessions and made contributions to a few of those debates. I've traveled to Turks and Caicos Islands to attend the 13th conference of the Commonwealth Women's Parliamentarians of the Caribbean, Americas, and the Atlantic region of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, as well as the 45th Regional Conference of the Caribbean, Americas, and the Atlantic Region of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. I recently traveled to Monaco with the Honorable Premier to attend the Monaco Boat Show. I also will between Tuesday and Wednesday, I was out in the district assessing homes and businesses affected by the floods. Now, when I went out to these uh, different homes, it was very devastating. There were some persons that lost everything, particularly in the Crab Lot area. Uh, they lost all their belongings because of the floods. Now, we recognize that there's an issue with uh, the floods because of, they're like, I was told there are like five guts coming down in this area, in the town area. Especially the one for Joe's Hill is always very forceful. When they do come, when the water comes down, it brings down a lot of debris and it helps to block, to do the blockage when the water is trying to get out. We recognize that it's an issue. Even during this period, I've been sent a lot of plans and a lot of suggestions that were made in the past, but none of these plans were implemented. None of the suggestions were taken into consideration. So the effort is to work with all of these folks here to get some of, this some of these problems mitigated and address the concerns. I know that we did quite a bit to get the guts cleaned but we needed the drains to be clean and that's what we recognized. So we're gonna work feverishly to get some of these uh, matters addressed. Now in terms of my office space, I am working feverishly to secure a space for the district. I've actually identified an office space and I'm hoping that I don't lose it because I've made uh, several attempts to get it up and functioning but because of matters beyond my control, and I wish not to say today that we don't have the office space yet, but I am working feverishly, feverishly, feverishly to get it done. Because I recognize that an office space is essential for us to get some of our works done. And it's not just to have an office space, because we have plans. We have plans to use the office space to have workshops, to have a food pantry, and to have a more community meetings, small meetings, so that we plan, plan ahead in, in terms of getting things done. So the office space is essential, and uh, working to get that office space up and running very soon. One of the things that I want us to agree today is that we definitely need to clean up the town. And that's been a pet peeve of many persons. Uh, some of my, my colleagues, uh, I know you hear from Honorable Lorna Smith a lot <laughs> about cleaning up the territory. She goes from town to town talking about cleaning up and I want us to definitely clean up the capital. I know that the city manager's office 
they're going to talk about that. They do, uh, they do the cleanups, they do the, the cutting of the grass, etc. And and the, the Department of Waste Management, Mr. Solomon, is going to talk about some of the plans, not just for our district, but territory-wide. But I have also met with him and discussed some of the ways in which we could help, help to continuously clean up the town, recognizing that they do work feverishly as well to get the town clean. We want to register or volunteer to, because I'm going to establish a beautification committee. So if you want to serve on that committee, I invite you to register on the form today, and then we will try to set up meetings as to how we can work towards beautifying the town a little bit more. One of the projects I campaigned about that was part of my launch speech was the Adopter Street Cleanup Program. And I did discuss that with Mr. Solomon, and Mr. Solomon agreed that he will assist us with providing the tools that we need for each of the, the committees or the, the groups that are going to work in the streets to continuously um, keep the streets clean. So whatever we need, plastic bags, brooms, shovels, whatever, the solid Department of Waste Management agreed to do that. But he will, again, explore that. Now, we have some civil works in, in the works, because as you know, as I mentioned before, the Ministry of Communications and Works, for your information as citizens, I think you, this information is not private and it's public. The monies that we need to do the works in any of the districts is lodged in the Ministry of Communications and Works. So we have to go to the ministry, give them our information, the projects that we want to get done, and they will be the ones to disperse the funds to get the works done. So we have a, a certain amount of funds for civil works, and we've identified already some of the works that we want to get done in the district. And there was a walkthrough, in my absence, there was a walkthrough to these different projects that we have identified to get done, hopefully before the end of the year, or at least to get started, because as you know, December is when government cuts off their pay in terms of any, any vouchers to be paid. So we have to get these things done. So we did a walkthrough, the forms have been set, we did a walkthrough, and we agreed with the Ministry of Communications and Works and the relevant departments that these works are going to get done by hopefully the end of December, okay? So one of the, the projects that we looked at is lighting up some of the dark areas in the town area. And I've already understood that the lights have been purchased by the Ministry of Communications and Works. So we just need to identify a few of the spots that we need to get lit up a little bit so that we can you know, address those dark spots in the town. And the other one is the coverage right behind here. There are two holes that have been opened for quite a while. They've been covered. But there are two holes right next to the E. Walvin Bully Park. They were there for quite some time. I understand that they were there from the hurricane time when they needed to, to clean the gut. But we need to get them covered because it's a safety hazard. So we're going to work on those to get those covered as well. And then we have the sidewalk in the vicinity of Serendipity. Because of the turnaround traffic, the, the, the sidewalks, we, we talked about connecting the sidewalks, but that's going to take a little longer. But we're going to focus on the area that's a little, little too dangerous. As a matter of fact, someone fell some time ago and broke their ankle in that ex same exact spot. So we want to address that spot first and create a wider a wider sidewalk so that persons can walk safely down the road. In addition to that, we're going to, well, we start, we address the, the, uh, the drains, the covering of the drains next to everyday sales and the Syrian stores in that particular area on Fleming Street. Public Works has started to cover them, and that was, um, they have a bit more, about two more to cover, to be properly covered with the drain coverage, and also, uh, oh yes, and the gut or drain to cover that gut between the Castro's and Richardson's rigging. There's a gut right there and um, they was promised to have that gut covered for quite some time so we've put that in as part of our civil works to get that, that covered, that gut covered as well. And we're looking at capital projects, we're looking at the parking structures, 
they're my understanding and I'm hoping Minister Rama will come so he can talk about the two proposals that he received um, to build some parking structures in the town area. But I would prefer for him to come and discuss those if he is on his way, Mrs. Smith Maduro. Okay, he's wrapping up a meeting and he'll be here shortly. So we'll talk about that. And then there's also a long standing project that I have known for years, and that is the walkway to do a pedestrian walkway from First Caribbean Bank all the way up to Vantapool's pharmacy. That's between those buildings there. That was a, a project for quite a while. So that's going to be one of our capital projects because we did talk Shoot. about pedestrian as a major to address it. And also, we're looking at a holistic plan. Mr. Greg Adams and his team, they have quite a bit of plans just sitting on the shelves. So we want to be able to utilize the skills of Mr. Greg a major Adams. issue, and we have to address it. And also, we're looking at a holistic plan. Mr. Greg Adams and his team, they have quite a bit of plans just sitting on the shelves. So we want to be able to utilize the skills of Mr. Adams and his team in town and country planning and some of the drawings and some of, what do you call it, Mr. Adams? The, the local area planning. There's some beautiful plans to transform our town, our capital, that we could be so proud of, not just for our visitors, but for us ourselves. So he has some plans, but until we can come with a holistic plan for not just the town area, but for the entire territory, and when it's ready to be presented, because Mr. Adams, the town and country planning department, falls under the premier's office. So he'll be guided by the premier in terms of the plans. But he's here today, because we discussed some of the plans that he has, and I like them, and uh, we really would like to see them get going, but of course we have to wait for the entire plan for that, that, that's in blind for the territory. In addition to that, we, until we get those and then we come back to you with all the plans that we have in mind. And um, I think there was one other idea, and I'm gonna throw it out now, and I was told that it will be political suicide. But <laughs> I'm going to put it out there for you to think about it, and then you will, so in the question and answer session at the end, you could share your thoughts about it. And that's the roundabout. The roundabout, either to decrease it in size or to remove it. But that's a thought. I know, I know. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna talk about that and discuss that some more. In addition to what I've said just about enough of me, I want to introduce to the persons to my right, and then Henry will come and he will make his presentation. Recognizing that we're all linked. There's not one organization that's solely responsible for what's happening in our territory, especially in our, in our city, in our town, in the capital. So again, I will invite Mrs. Janice Brathwaite Edwards to present what, so that you could know as well, so that for your information, know that the city manager's office is also responsible, of course, for the city and what they do and um, how we will be working together to, you know, transform, continue to transform the town. Because there's been some works with the palm trees, with some sidewalks and et cetera, et cetera. But we have still some more work to be done to transform our capital. Okay, so I'll give the mic to Mrs. Edwards and then she will present on the city manager's office. And then if you will hold your questions until the end and we have a fruitful discussion at the end, please, thanks. Good, good evening. Good evening. I thought I was in this room by myself for a minute. Um, I am Janice Brathwaite Edwards, the city manager, and I need to let everybody in this room know I'm on sick leave, but district rep called me, Jan showed up. Um, so I'm not at the office. The office number for your information is 494-3172. Any questions, you can have, you can call the office. I can't take the stress, but District Rep called me. I am here to represent 
the Office of the City Manager and Wicomski Development Authority. We are actually responsible for whatever happens within the confines of the city. City runs from roundabout in Slaney to roundabout at Stonehaven, right? And that comprises of not only the fourth district, but the third district, the fourth district, the fifth district, and the sixth district. So I have to answer to four ministers because every minister that has a space within the confines of the city needs the city management and Wicomski Development Authority's attention. Our city comprises of Wicomski, which is the most land that is managed by the Office of the City Manager and Wicomski Development Authority. Um, the adopt a street thing is a nice thing. I want to adopt my street in McNamara. I don't know what anybody else wants to do, so I will sign up for adopt a street because I will adopt the street in McNamara. I don't know who else will, but city management is going to take care of the street in McNamara. Um, the lights, um, district rep, as you talked about the lights, we do have a proposal on file for the dark areas already. Um, I did not know that the lights had been ordered. We knew that we asked for some 580 lights. We didn't know that they were ordered, but we do have some locations within the confines of the city where we would like some of these lights to go. Um, and those lights were supposed to go in tandem with the Royal Virgin Islands Police Forces camp CC CTV cameras. So we do have that. Um, the gut covering by everyday sales, city management did that, not public works. We did it um, because I happened to be in everyday sales one afternoon and a young lady was walking there and next thing I know, the young lady disappeared. And when I came outside of everyday sales, she was in the gutter and I was like, I can't have this happening in, within the confines of the city. So we did repair that. But now that we sat down today and had a discussion about that same little gut, I think the gut comes down behind Crickies and the, the church, and when it gets to everyday stales, it becomes narrow. So what one of our challenges within the confines of the city is that the guts at the top are wide, but when they get to the city, they become so narrow, they can't take the pressure of the water coming down. So that is something that we need to address. I think on Monday, our team was out and we were looking at the gut between the Methodist Church and HM Prison. And we, uh, we decided on Monday that we were going to clean it up. Unfortunately, we got the rain yesterday and we looked in it just before we came to this meeting, and yes, we have to clean it. So that's a project that we're gonna be working on next week to ensure that that gut is cleaned, and under the, the gut runs under the road, so we have to make sure we get under the road so that we can clean out the gut so that the water can flow down um, a little bit easier. But we're also going to grill the gut so that just water passes down. No debris will be coming into town. You'll be, you'll be able to clean the degree in certain sections of that gut. That is something that we're going to be doing next week. Um, and we, yesterday when we saw the water in the city, we, we declared that our office was flooded. Fortunately for us, we didn't even get a drop of water. Um, and that was good because there was a lot of water on Shoreway Drive and we just assumed because all of that water had come back up that we had the water in our office, we didn't. Um, the walkway between Vanta Pools and Social Security Building, I have a proposal that I got on my desk last week. Last week. I got a proposal from one of the businesses in the area to actually create a pedestrian pathway for there. Mr. Adams, it's something that we're gonna send forward to you so that you could have a look at it so that we could decide whether that is feasible or not. It is for civil works, but within the confines of the city and Wicomski, we have looked at the partnerships. There are businesses on both sides of the walkway and we have encouraged the businesses to partner together so that they can help us to build the pedestrian, park, the pedestrian walkway so that it's not just a government thing. 
the partnership is it's behind or in front of your business so you should take the national pride and try to ensure that the walkway is facilitated yes i have the aerial view and the maps from town and country planning as how that area is should look um, i'm not sure that everybody's in agreement with it but it's something that we can revisit um As it relates to us, we actually have a team of eight, eight people in the field, and they, most of what they do is a lot of the cutting of the, the bushes and the trimmings. We do not have a horticulturist on board. It's something that we've thought about, um, and we take responsibility for any property that's within the confines of the city. And I say that to say that Queen Elizabeth Park does not belong to Wickham Ski Development Authority or the Office of the City Manager, but it is in the city. So we have taken on the responsibility without any funding to ensure that Queen Elizabeth Park stays maintained. It is not easy, but we do it. And so we are hoping that based on the fact that we do all of these little side things that are budget, once we put it through, would come through, and that I can tell you $115,000 cannot, will not clean the city of Roto. And that's what our budget is currently at the moment. So we're actually doing some other things to try to see if we can ensure that our budget becomes a little bit bigger so that we can do a lot more work. Um, there, there are many things to be done in the city. Um, we try our best, we come out. Um, there's a lot of activity happening in the city at the moment, and we try to ensure that we stay on top of what it is, is going on so that our city could look the way we want our city to do. We have found, though, that we would decide to do one thing fix one problem, and by the time we finish fixing that one problem, somebody else creates another problem. I'll also like to say the whole issue of popping up and pop-up shops on the side of the street is something we're trying to discontinue, and so therefore we have um, encouraged people to do the one-day pop-ups at Market Square. One-day pop-ups at Market Square, it's $25 for a kiosk and $100 deposit. We prefer if you would go there, pop up, then you pop up with your table and your tent on the side of the road. We would like to discourage that because it's not making our city look any better. It's making our city kind of look run down, and I don't appreciate that. So if you're thinking about popping up, please, please, please come to the office, apply and we'll try to accommodate you in the market square. Thank you all. Any questions for me? At the end, I will take them. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Edwards. Let's give her a round of applause, please. At this moment, I'd like to recognize the Director for Public Works, Mr. Jeremy Hodge, and his, uh, Mr. what's his name? Uh, Kelvin George. Mr. Kelvin George. He's a surveyor. So they're going to speak in a little bit. So just recognizing you for now and thank you for coming. I know they have been busy today <laughs> trying to get the place cleaned up after our, water, our shower of rains and stuff. So I'll turn it over now to Mr. Marcus Solomon. He's a newly appointed director for Department of Waste Management. And he will give us some ideas on what he plans to do with the garbage in town and the cleanliness of our, our district. We had a meeting, so... We are going to do some good things, right? Wonderful. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Um, thank you for having me here. So similarly, what I would like to do is just remind everyone um, that the Department of Waste Management is responsible for the management of waste um, across the British Virgin Islands. Um, our services include recycling, Waste incineration, public education, waste collection and transport, beautification, dump site management, and litter abatement. We are presently working towards um, aligning and ensuring that we align ourselves correctly to play our part in this country trying to achieve a green and blue economy. 
And in that regard, um, since I've arrived here, my focus has been trying to strengthen your waste infrastructure to ensure the dump site is better managed, that we attend to illegal dumping, and that we try to divert as much waste from the landfill. And most recently, if the persons have been following the, some of the tenders that we have been issuing, we are trying to acquire um, some end user markets for some of the waste streams, like the waste oil in particular. So let me touch now on some of the plans that we are working on, which will actually touch um, District 4 as well, and I'll try to go through it in certain key um, areas. So the first part is waste bins and collection. I know that is an issue that has been discussed in other districts I have gone to. We are presently trying and working towards trying to introduce more house-to-house -house collections and review the bin designs so that we will have less access to uh, flies and animals and also overflow of the bins. Right? If you go to other countries, you'll see that there's different designs that reduces the overflow of bins and also reduces the number of flies or rats or chickens that go into the bins, and we are looking at that as well. But we are also looking to introduce more house-to-house -house collections. So we are hoping in 2024, and even now, you will see some of these um, initiatives coming on board. We are also looking to work, and soon we're going to have some discussions with um, the police as well. These meetings are intended for those purposes. Households to try to broaden our surveillance network so that we have an idea of who is littering. And I'll come to that when I speak about some of the ideas we have for littering as well across the country, that we want to have some further discussions with yourselves and um, all the other institutions that are involved, including our line ministry. With, with respect to dumb site management, um, as you're aware, and before coming here, um, I would have done my own personal research, and when I arrived, I, I had a more hands-on approach to it that we have had, and this country was, was struggling with fires on the landfill. And there are many reasons for that. Um, one of the main reasons is that everything that, we, that, that is waste, we put on the landfill. And just basic chemistry will tell you certain uh, mixtures, right heat, will cause the necessary combustion to cause a fire. You will realize that what some of the things I've put in place since I've arrived here is a fire mitigation plan. So you'll realize that even in some cases where we have had fires, you'll realize it has not lasted no more than 24 hours. And you'll see by now, you should be seeing less and less smoke coming from the, the, the landfills as well. In Virgin Gorda, it used to have flies plus the fires. If you go on Virgin Gorda now, you'll find there's less flies there as well. Because we, what we are trying to do is do some level of source separation, ensure that we are compacting, and ensure that we are monitoring both the contractor and ourselves as related to the management of those landfills. Some of the ideas that we have for the landfills um, as we continue to put some mechanism uh, measures in place is that we have to increase the security and, infra and do infrastructural upgrades to the facilities. We have to upgrade the road network. One of the challenges, especially on Tortola landfill, is that if it rains, we do not have access to the landfill in terms of going up and moving the garbage up to the landfill, and that ought not to happen on any landfill. In fact, let me go back a little bit and do, say something that I've said in my first district meeting since when I arrived. There in the, when you categorize a landfill, you have top tier, low tier. The low tier landfills are called uncontrolled dump site. That is what total, that is what we have on the on in the BVI, All right? Um, what I'm trying to get us to is the next tier, which is a controlled landfill, All right? And the best tier is a sanitary landfill, All right? Which manages leachate and and um, your methane gas, etc., right? 
Um, so some of the initiatives to try to get us there to a control dump site, which I'm trying to do is to upgrade your road network so we have improved access and reliability um, to, to, to reach the, the, the point at which where we um, dispose of the waste. I'm also working towards trying to divert many of your liquid waste, such as your oils and medical waste and, and batteries, which are easily, if they, when they get catch a fire, it's very difficult to out, especially when tires catch fires. Um, also, we are also trying to introduce, and which we have, sorry, introduced, is daily, com daily um, compliance reports. So I'm aware of what happens daily, and there's reports on how the contractor performs as well as staff performs in terms of daily covering of the, of the, of, of the landfill. We are also trying to make sure that we have standards in place for compaction to guide both the staff and your contractors. We are trying to digitize our waste volume records and the type of waste coming onto the landfill and capture that. We are also introducing a uh, more control system for persons who want to actually go and do salvaging of waste on the landfill. And we have also introduced um, quality improvement reports with the contractors and staff so that we learn from some of the things that we are doing right and we stop some of the things that we are doing wrong. With respect to Virgin Gorda, that's Totola. You would have seen uh, RFP would have gone out so, uh, with an attempt to try to um, treat with waste on the Virgin Gorda dump site. Um, that RFP seeking a proposal in the form of having a material recovery facility to deal with all recyclable waste that is produced on the landfill, um, sorry, in, in Virgin Gorda, and that we estimate is between 85 to 90 percent of the waste. We are also trying to do deal with the waste water produced um, in Virgin Gorda. Presently, it's dumped on the on the landfill, and that is a health hazard. It could cause many um, uh, viruses, etc. So we are trying to deal with that by having a pl within the site development plan a, a wastewater stabilization pond. And we are also for the 50% of waste or 10% of waste we have to deal with, we want to have a sanitary landfill. There. So that has gone out. The, it closes on October the 13th. I'm hopeful that we can get submissions coming out of that. With respect to Andy Garda, we are also looking at Andy Garda with a view of trying to set up a transfer station there. Look at the possibility of using a mobile incinerator um, as to deal with those waste that we cannot recycle across on Andy Garda. That leads me now moving on to the issue of the waste incinerator. Um, what we are trying to do at this point in time is to try to uh, to try to get that waste incinerator operational. Uh, and at the same time, we are, tr we are exploring options as it relates to introducing waste to energy so that we can have an incinerator that is capable of producing the energy we need on the, on, on the site, as well as providing sufficient feedstock to the electrical company. So you'll have more electricity that they can provide uh, the island. So we are looking at those options. We are still exploring those options, and we may eventually um, go out to see if we can find persons who can assist with regards to that. With respect to street cleaning, um, we, are, we continue to look at ways in which we can um, expand on our services related to street cleaning. And one of those ideas that we had, and it came from, from, from within the BVI, um, is adopt a beach or adopt a street, and we are looking to support those initiatives so that persons can adopt a street, and the department will support those level of volunteerism, and hopefully in the adopting of the street, um, persons will every month or so clean the streets, working with our department to ensure that streets are clean at least once a month across the entire BVI. 
With respect to waste reduction measures that we are introducing, reuse and recycling, um, we recognize that, and I have recognized personally when I go through the drives, that the BVI has a nice culture so far in terms of most persons are separating the, some of the recyclables at, that we are gathering right now. What the greatest challenge I've seen for the country is that we do not have the, um, the end user market established as yet. So we have been presently working towards trying to establish the end user market so that we can have either it, be, either it is um, attended to locally or we export it to a country that can utilize it and it doesn't pile up and eventually becomes like a dump site. So we are trying to avoid that. So we already have uh, a successful tender related to the waste oil. So you'll see that happening soon. That we are to, and we have working with our end user market for that waste oil. So soon we'll be looking to invite persons to actually bring in the waste oil to us um, so that we could attend to that that, that particular um, waste stream. We are hoping to do the same and prioritize the same soon for your plastics that you already have been collecting and your aluminum, but we want to also expand that to look at it from your scrap metal as well as your textile. With respect to litter abatement or trying to reduce litter, um, we are looking to try to tackle that via three areas. One, we want to ensure there's, that we are able to prevent it, detect it, and enforce it. So some of the, um, some of the things we will want to have some level of conversations around, and I'm happy to see that some, some of the agencies are in the room, is that we want to look at having some level and, and discussions with the public and the various ministries about the introduction of mandatory waste management plans for commercial properties and apartment and construction sites so that they will have to detail where the associated waste will be disposed of and submit such plans to the department for approval. We also want to also have some conversations around besides doing that mandatory submissions of the contract or agreement between those same parties and the collectors of their waste so that we are aware of who is responsible for collecting the waste for those particular institutions. We also want to introduce something that most countries have um, as well as that mandatory Anybody who wants to have a license and as a collector ought to now be able to practice having a waste manifest, just simply like what your postal companies have, right? So that they will have to record the waste and whom they collected by or where they collected by, and that that manifest must be signed off by the approved um, treatment plant or dump site upon receiving it so that you now could cross-reference if you have paid a contractor, if he had dropped it by us, and if he didn't, then we are aware that him, it went somewhere else. And that is why in the other suggestion we, have, we are stating that where we find contractors or persons have been caught doing these things, we wanna have again some discussions around um, banning these persons from bidding for government contracts, at least for one year. We also want to look at the legislations and policies that we have, and we want to um, propose that we increase those fines, right, so that it also, and also with increasing the fines, provide some reward mechanism for those parties who, are, who cooperate and help detect those crimes, so that they are given a reward, especially if they are assisting us, the police, with regards to having a successful conviction of those parties that we have found to be um, littering. When it comes to public education, we want to make sure and try to continue our outreach programs in schools, but we want to also start to broaden that to have conversations with institutions and ways in which they can help assist with regards to managing waste that they even produce as well in terms of separating those that can be recycled 
and uh, as well as ensuring that they, ha they, they, they have hired the correct persons who could treat with their waste and treat with it responsibly. So we want to go out to the um, institutions as well, not just the schools, and we also want to have targeted um, discussions with districts as well with regards to how we can help improve the management of waste and, and the best way of managing various types of waste that they produce as well. So you want to do that as well when it comes to the, the public outreach. I think I covered most of the areas that I wanted to cover except to also add that we also want to make sure that we start to put up some signage so persons are aware of where bins are located also, they are aware that littering is wrong and those type of things. So we are working on that. Um, just to give everyone an update on, with respect to the Delorec vehicles, the badge is expected, I think, October the 20th. Um, so we are hoping to move those vehicles that we have already collected, both in Virgin Gorda and Totola, by that time. Um, we are hoping to also make some improvements to that program in terms of as I mentioned earlier, um, looking at that program more holistically so that we could have a partner with us who can um, manage scrap iron, all the waste scrap iron that we produce, and we work with them to find an end user market. So again, as we collect it, it leaves, and we could reduce the cost that we presently spend on the management of those direct vehicles and scrap irons that we are producing in the country. So that it, is it for now until you, we have the question and answers, and I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Solomon. At this time, I'd like to recognize Honorable Reimer and ask him to come here, please. The Minister for Communications and Works, and also like to recognize Ms. Haley Trott. She's the Assistant Secretary in the Ministry of Communications and Works, who is also responsible for City Manager's Office. I think I recognize these folks already. What Mr. Solomon didn't see is that one of the things that we had discussed was continuously having you know, cleanups in the town. And the idea was to, we know that they do it, they do, and they do a wonderful job, but the workers come out from six in the morning till one in the afternoon. So the idea now is to switch it and have shifts. So they have them early in the morning to the afternoon and in the afternoon to the evening because debris and <laughs> dirt accumulates in the afternoon as well. So we're gonna have that program, and I think we would agree that they would have the switch instead of having them just in all at the same time, have them work in shifts so that during the day, in the afternoon, the area is covered, especially in our town area, okay? So thank you, Mr. Solomon, for that. I will leave the Public Works Minister and Public Works for last because I know there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of questions there and I'll, I'll invite Mr. Henry Cricky to come and make his presentation and him and Ms. Uh, Ms. Drayton are representing the Virgin Islands Police Force Traffic Advisory Committee. Thank you very much, Honorable Hart Smith. And I also recognize uh, Honorable Kai Reimer. And good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Henry Creaky, and I am a member of the uh, RVIPF Traffic Advisory Group. I am not a member of the RVIPF. <laughs> for those who might be wondering. Uh, but the group is a collaboration of uh, persons from the police force, including Ms. Drayton, several police officers who are active, uh, several retired police officers, senior police officers who've been involved in traffic for many years. Um, I think we have a petition from at least one government department, city manager, yet at least two and um, some for folks from the community as well. So I'm a volunteer on the, on the committee. Let me see if I can get this technology to work. Okay. So I think, you know, we all would agree on the current challenges that we have regarding traffic in road town. We have congested parking lots everywhere it's very difficult to find parking on a regular basis. Persons park on the sidewalks sometimes. Um, we have cars that block entrances to both businesses 
and driveways to residences and businesses and even blocking cars. They obstruct the safe flow of traffic, so you have to be doing all kinds of stunts sometimes to get where you have to go. Sometimes you get into accidents or fender benders. Rural town is not very pedestrian friendly. And overall, it doesn't, we don't get the feeling that there's an overall plan for the town to make it the best it, it can be. This picture, I think, speaks volumes, if you look at it closely. If you look at rural town, and these smart TVs, too smart for my light, but what, what do you notice? Cars, what, what the majority of rural town is vehicles, vehicles everywhere. There are more vehicles parked in rural town. Dorian, I don't know why I do. But there are more vehicles parked in rural town than there are buildings. Um, if we get a pick the mm, laptop up. So, it's up? Okay. Yeah, there, there, there are more vehicles than there are buildings. Um, so, I think Honorable Hart Smith spoke about the potential for multi-use and multi-level parking decks. Uh, if, if you would imagine, you know, this is a big parking lot next to Village Key, for example. It's just one level. But if you could imagine if you had, I'm not saying this is one of the areas we propose, but let's say you had a four-story parking deck there. Imagine the cars you could fit in it. You could fit all these cars on the first level, and then you can probably fit these and these on the second level. Then you can fit these here on the third level, and then maybe these on the fourth level and some more. So all these areas where I said you could fit cars, the same number of cars would fit in a much smaller footprint. And it would open up this space for any kind of development. It could be restaurants. It could be green areas. It could be pedestrian-friendly development, right? All of those things are what we can do if we, we use uh, the multi-level park index, which are not you know, rocket science. We have this graphic as a comparison. So this first area here is um, downtown in Bermuda, Hamilton, Bermuda. This area is downtown in Bridgetown, Barbados. This area is our downtown, road town, and this area is downtown in um, a city called Alpharetta with about 60,000 people and about 30, 000, 30 square miles is the city. Of all these four cities, we are the least densely populated island. So we have about 23 to 25,000 people living in Tortola within 24 square miles. In Bermuda, they have about 60,000 people living in 20,000 square miles. And these folks in this city have about 70,000 people in about 30 square miles. So we are the least densely populated, so it's not a matter of, you know, um, we are more densely populated than they are, it's, it's something else. Public transportation is a key part of the, of the equation, agreed. Paid pack in the city, do you, do you still my presentation? So if you could hold on a minute. <laughs> um, I hope I didn't do something wrong here, but I, I know you presented this before. Um, we were fortunate to have received some of the vision of the town and country planning unit in um, our, our deliberations, right? And we supported nearly everything they had in their, in their recommendations. So one of the key things they had was essentially zoning out the rural town area um, in line with what's existing and what they think would work well in those zones. So for example, the green area they had as a coastal development. This red area is the primary commercial development. So you have you know, your banks in there, central admin complex, 
several of your big telecoms companies and so on. They had a civic area in the pink, festival grounds, cultural center, multi-purpose complex, um, Ewari and Bruley, South Val Park, and so on. Uh, this orange area they had as secondary commercial, so more retail stores, clothes, beauty salons, and so on. And then the blue was historical areas, like the Methodist Church, Anglican Church, uh, Old Government House Museum, and other, others along Main Street. And then they had strategic connections between the areas, so you could walk between the areas more easily. Uh, and we thought this was a brilliant plan. Uh, we wanted to, to give our support. I think we did to Honorable Hart Smith on that before. So what we propose, we don't see Rotown changing overnight. Um, we don't see the issue with congestion shift changing overnight realistically. So we were proposing to do it in phases. Phase one, um, we could do the, we had these things in mind. So drivers coming from the eastern side of the island could use the festival grounds and those around the Scout Building and Sugar Works Museum parking lots and then take a shuttle into town, which, and some people do now. Those coming from west, we identified some properties down um, by Road Reef area and coming up a little bit, even in front of the waterfront by the hospital where persons can park, take shuttles, or walk. And drivers coming from the north could use either one of those two, depending on which is more convenient for them. In phase two, um, we talk about constructing attractive, it's the key word, multi-use parking decks. A parking deck, as many of us know, does not have to look like a parking deck. Right, so the front of your parking deck can have beautiful shops, restaurants, anything. People don't have to use a parking deck until they drive in. Um, and we said using public-private partnerships. So for example, if I have a piece of land, right, and the government wants to put a parking deck there, maybe they could use two floors for the parking deck, and I could use the top two floors to rent out office spaces, restaurants, shops, a small little hotel, conference rooms, anything, right? And we can share the cost of that. So I don't have to build a whole five-story building by myself, and the government doesn't have to build a whole five-story parking deck by themselves. So we have a public-private partnership in a regard like that. Uh, we speak about modernizing sidewalks in phase two. Uh, to increase their height and width, to encourage walking, um, foot pedal scooters, and, and disability access. Because if your sidewalks aren't wide enough and persons have to go, you know, disabled persons have to pass through, it's difficult. Uh, we had this little demonstration here on the right to show persons crossing a, this is a four lane road in the middle of a downtown city. Because we believe, for example, the festival grounds, if you park there and you need to get by the market or by super value, you will have to have at least one crosswalk like this. So this is a demonstration of how it works. The traffic there was moving at about the same speed as our traffic in that area. And it's, we believe it's, it's doable. <laughs> Not on this day. Phase three is implementing the tools, right? So, you know, one idea is you could have a, a citywide uh, kind of a toll system. So if you drive into certain areas in the city where parking is at a premium, cameras recognize your plates, and you could have a subscription where you're paying um, to access that area. Uh, of course, you could have metered parking systems. So either, let's say if it was along Main Street, or right next to the buildings if you wanted to. Um, there could be metered parking there as well, where you know you park in a spot, you go on your app, you pay the bill, and you stay there. And as long as you don't overstay, you don't get um, towed or booted or whatever it is. Uh, and there's another step in between this one that we don't use as yet, 
which is free parking for a limited time. So you could say, well, parking in this area is limited to just two or three hours at a time without a penalty. So you can phase this in uh, however you choose to. And the funds from the tolls could go towards giving the city manager a bigger budget and the minister a bigger budget to maintain transit systems and keep the city looking beautiful. Of course, there'll be challenges with any plan. All these things cost money, right? Uh, property owners may have conflicting ideas, different to what the government might want to do in the areas. Um, the government has to purchase additional shuttles. There is always some resistance to change, especially if it's gonna cost people to have to park and they don't usually pay to park. And um, the festival site, it works very well as parking now, um, depending on if you put a multi-level deck there, you might want to think about relocating the festival village, which is something people would have to talk about. So that's it. Um, I have a quote here from one of our members. And uh, her, she says, all efforts must be made at this juncture to address the congestion in Road Town. It is the only way to modernize the capital and create a town center that is aesthetically pleasing and worthy of pride. Thank you. Thank you so much, Henry. Diane wants to say something. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Henry. The question might come, why the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force is coming together to do something like this? We recognize there was an issue uh, with uh, traffic within the road town area. We, we realize that, and all of you must realize it, that every little cranny and crook that you can push a car in, there's somebody pushing a car in there. It obstructs traffic, partic particularly with the uh, change in the traffic. It, it's obst it obstructs you know, cars. It's, it's, an, it's an issue that the police are, are having to deal with. And I, I, I made the analogy that if, if you came into your home and you saw ants everywhere, the, your probability is just to walk right back out and close the door and just call an exterminator. It is well above what police can handle now in terms of uh, the violators. We have to think differently. We have to think outside the box. So you may view this presentation as way out there, but it is um, issues that we have to think about and deal with right now. There's a number of members, um, uh, uh, the Deputy Commissioner uh, Amri would have been here tonight. He's off island, but he's also a very vocal member and a very, um, he, he, he attends regularly the meetings. So again, thank you, Henry Kuki, for that presentation. Thank you. But they didn't mention it, so I want to know if they're going to mention it. Um, like handicap packing, and so that elderly people can pack in front of the bank instead of, so it's going to be in there? I didn't hear it mentioned. No, no, I, I didn't mention it before. It's not in this presentation. Okay, not in this presentation. It can only have that if you have more space within the system. So I didn't hear it in this presentation just now. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you again. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll agree with me, the transformation of our capital is looking bright, don't you think? Yes, we need the money, we need the resources, and do it in phases, eventually we'll get to where we want to, to see our city. So now I will leave it to the Public Works Department. 
But of course, we'll allow Minister Reimer to speak first, and then we'll take it over to the Public Works Department. They have quite a bit of presentation to present to us this evening. And I did say we would have wanted to leave here at 7.30, <laughs> but bearing in mind we did have a late start. We can go up to 8, but it depends on the discussions. And we're not going to leave until everybody gets a chance to speak. So bear with us this evening, okay? Thank you. Thank you, um, Honorable. Good evening, everyone. I acknowledge um, the panel that is the sitting before us. I just want to acknowledge, though, uh, the presentation just made by the police council. And uh, I know it's, it's a great idea that you presented, um, but I, I just want to let you know, and most persons know that uh, the Ministry of Communications and Works, most of what you spoke about, it's already basically entrained. And for us to get uh, this plan moving forward, we needed to have the legislation amended in terms of getting the parking meters. We are right now at the, the ministry is dialoguing with the AG chambers so that we can get that um, chapter 218 of the legislation to be amended so that we can be able to facilitate some of the ideas that you presented. And we know it has been a problem with parking in, in the road town area, and that is why we started the park and ride. Um, and right now, BV, um, another department would be building a parking structure at the um, festival grounds. So that would allow us and encourage us and we work together so that persons would be able to park more at the festival grounds and the shuttles would be able to collect persons from the festival ground um, and encourage more persons to park on the festival grounds and also down at the parking lot by the hospital grounds. That is how the project actually started. But after the, the trial phase, um, persons just went back to parking at their own uh, businesses and we will be encouraging persons to now be parking at those free parking and the shuttles would be able to pick them up, pick persons up and take them uh, throughout the city. So I'm, I'm glad to see that we are thinking alike. Um, in terms of the parking structures, we actually have um, two interested persons to do the parking structures. Um, one would be um, the intended site as the, pers as the entity identified and one, one at the, um, what do you call that area where CCT is in that area? And one at, down at the hospital grounds. And the area that you, look, you, you spoke about, I know public works, when I worked there years ago, I think they were a bit reluctant to put a parking structure there because of the, the congestion. Because when so many persons are trying to get into the parking structure, you would see more traffic um, back up, and then when persons are leaving, um, there would surely be a, a congestion. So we looked at that, and we moved away from in the city having a parking structure. So those are ideas that we we <clears throat> we looked at um, quite a few times, and and you know we'll move to the next stage to see what is possible for those entities to try to build this parking structure. Just like you said, it would basically be a PPP because the land is owned by the government, but the entities would be able to um, construct them and, and build them. But that is just in, in line with your, your proposal and, you know, with the, the, the method parking, we would hope that since the council is there that we would see increased enforcement and persons would be able to respect uh, the, 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 the meters or we would probably have to put some either entity in place to get that achieved. But again, I'm just happy to be here this evening. Um, I have my capable team at, at the Public Works who would be speaking on some of the developments. And you know, I just want to highlight the importance of the capital to, to this government. Because when we got elected in 2019, we realized that there were no trees in the city. Um, the, the market square, it was in a dilapidated state. And though persons are saying that it's used for not what is intended, those were plans on the book that we just initiated and we were able to, to refine them and we uh, rebuilt the market square and we are seeing that you know, we have some small businesses and we know the importance of small business to um, any economy and it's a driving force. So you know, as this, this ministry, Communications and Works, 
Um, we are the entity that um, builds the infrastructure to facilitate um, these small businesses, and we have some other projects coming on stream that you know would help to foster a, um, a, a brick and mortar location for those budding entrepreneurs so that they can actually have a space to operate. And we've seen the traffic turn around because we knew the congestions within the city. And now we see a if more efficient flow of traffic uh, within the city. Persons still speak about the market square, I mean the wrong about, and the, 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 the confusion there. Um, but we're hoping to you know, do more, more public um, campaign and trying to educate persons as to how to maneuver around the, the wrong about. But besides that, you know, we are, we are working to make sure that it's a more efficient flow of traffic. Um, the city management, we are trying our best to, to keep the city clean. And uh, I, I just want to acknowledge the work done uh, with the passage of the, I mean, of the tropical storm yesterday. I know we, we did some remedial works in terms of making the, the roadways accessible and um, traversable, but now we're in the process of trying to clean up the city. Um, Public Work would be able to speak more on that in terms of getting trucks and cleaning up the streets and making sure that our city is back to what it used to be. Um, but I just want to acknowledge persons for being here. Um, we, we, fared, uh, we did well in terms of what took place yesterday. Um, I understand that we had about eight inches of rain, and that was quite a lot. So, you know, we, we must say, in terms of all the preparation um, that was done with the gut cleaning, and no matter how good we clean the guts, as you would notice right there by the fire station, uh, we did extensive cleaning there, but it still overflowed. And that's because of the debris and the gut and, you know, the debris from, from higher up um, within the communities. So, you know, we'll continue to to try to be as um, proactive as possible in keeping our, our guts clean. We know we have to do some um, infrastructural um, changes, but you know, we, we have them all and we, we are working to get them sorted. So I'll you know, be quiet until the, the questions are asked and move it on to the Director of Public Works. And, and please give the Director of Public Works a round of applause for the work that he did yesterday in trying to get our territory um, back up to speed. And we can't forget our district rep as we are in the fourth district as she was out in her boots and her cap. You didn't even recognize her, but she was there checking on people and making sure that they were in good condition. I got so many calls, um, you know, different issues with pipes and persons are blocked in. Um, but, you know, we worked together to make sure that persons were safe. So, you know, again, a round of applause for the district rep and for even holding this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Honorable Rep for the 4th District. And I'm happy to be here among you, people of the Road Town area. I hope the weather was kind enough to you. I know it was quite an ordeal, and we will continue to do what we do to get us back to where we are and, and, and better. I really want the technology to work because it's going to look a lot better on the screen than on the, the paper. But I did work with some uh, copies, which you'll have to pass around, share, and uh, look at. One of the functions of the Public Works Department is to make recommendations on improving traffic flows, right? To minimize congestion, traffic congestion. What I'm gonna present this evening are two recommendations that we're making to the ministry and that we want to share with you tonight. One which is in the area of, both of course are in the, they're in the road town area because that's where the most congestion houses. Everybody's coming into town to work, to shop, to do business. On the waterfront between McNamara Junction to the Ports Authority, where we'd catch the boat to Virgin Garda in town, 
Okay. This will work. Okay. As you would note at peak hours when persons are leaving town, whether they're going to leave in town to go to the west or they're leaving more in the western area to get to town, it, it becomes a bit tight. And a lot of that we have found has, uh, has to do with persons wanting to make turns in certain junctions. If you want to turn off to go to the commercial court, if you want to turn off to go into the Port Authority, if you want to turn off to go into the parking area, if you want to turn off to go to the hospital, if you want to turn off to go in there by Dr. Paquin, and, and, and so on and so forth. What we've done, we have recommended and have completed some drawings. I met this at the Public Works Department, I, I must say, um, with a few tweaks. Is, the, is to create a third lane. That third lane would be a holding lane. So instead of persons stopping in traffic, in a lane, when you're trying to go westerly, easterly, they would pull off into the holding lane in the middle. You will hold, wait for a void in the traffic so you can turn off to go where you need to go without stopping traffic. And those, lay by, those holding lanes, each lane will be able to hold, I think approximately about four or five cars at a time. And that will reduce the need to stop in the traffic and hold and, and pause the traffic, creating congestion for people to go either west, east or west. Kevin, go on to the, the, the nicer looking slides. Also, you would notice as we get it up, get the other areas up, you'll notice that some of what the police advisory presented, all right, uh, paving and making the parking, make it good, this is the one. This, this is a nice one, you see the hospital and everything. Making parking, the free parking available on the outskirt. This would be the free parking on the west side of town. So you come into town, which is part of the designs, you park and there'll be a little booth for the shuttle and the shuttle will be there to collect you and take you where you need to go into town. Then of course, as we spoke of the festival ground, that would be the free parking on that end of town where the shuttle can collect you, take you around town and reduces parking congestion in the area and eventually introduce paid parking in the center of road town, right? So this you will see is what we're proposing. The designs look very much like this where you're going to have this holding lane in the middle. So cars will be able to pull off because they want to turn in to this junction or this and as it goes up higher. Even the area at the Post Authority, persons will no longer be parking along here. That will change. Even the way you enter will change to reduce persons having to stop the traffic to get in there. Okay. So that's it in a nutshell. Those designs are now completed. This is how it would basically look. So this is a terminal over here. Where is the area with the tom now? No. This, area, this one. Okay, okay. Any questions on? Pull it up, pull it up, Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, like if we, like here. Depends on the intersection. Depends on it. So right here. Well, it will reduce it. So if you're going west, you want to turn in here, 
governor's house hospital. Right? So if you're at the hospital? Yeah. Mm hmm Put that one. Right. Yes, fish bay, fish bay is a good example. Similar here. Okay, for instance, there are a lot of, the, if, if you're going westbound, right, and I, I would say to avoid persons, whether coming east or west, to be driving in the, um, in the middle lane, you could put some small curb walls so that you, you, you pull in and you turn so that there's no traffic that will be flowing in that lane. And not just marking a small one, yes. Noted, and, and we'll get to it. As, as we move along and we observe the challenges, we, we continue to make adjustments to improve it. Right? One last thing I'll say about your design, which is absolutely fabulous and great. Um, Thank you. For now, the current parking mm -hmm. is, is just oversaturated yeah. because that is also serving parking. That, that parking area is for the hospital and for the businesses and for the travel areas. Bring, bring it so, up now. Oh, that's a bit. Oh, okay. Yes, so. So, for right now, within my reach. The grassy area <laughs> will become paved 
and marked. So you'll be able to be more efficient with how many cars we can hold in the area. So it, it will still improve it for the time being until we get to the, right? Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Good. I'm happy you like it. So I think, yeah. So I have another. I have another one. If you bear with me, just a moment while we switch slides. I think I think we would all agree that that area on Botanic Station, that Botanic Station Road with the big um, Tamon tree next to Nibs Auto Sales, that area, is troublesome. Eh? Hazardous. Huh? We, we had a we had a brief yeah <laughs> yeah other food yeah. okay <laughs> so this gives you a bird's eye view of what we're proposing we've proposed to the ministry right so you have. I think this is a police station. Okay, so you have police station, Botanic Gardens, Nibs Auto Sales, and this is the A.O. Shirley. This is a big common tree. I know we can't remove trees in the BVI, so we made sure that we incorporate our designs surrounding the tree. So what we propose is to have a roundabout. The tree, from our calculations, will fit on the far corner of the roundabout right here. And we will mark the roads in a manner so that you have that roundabout concept. So everyone knows to wait, look before you move and get on a roundabout. Yield to the right. Right? Thank you. So when the questions come about larger vehicles, what this roundabout, this roundabout will not be like the one in town, which is about two feet off the ground, but it will be at basically road level. So it allows larger vehicles coming across to be able to, to take a wider turn rather than making it a restricted area. So while it's going to be raised a bit, it will be able to hold a load of, of vehicles so that they can make the turn to go in any of these areas. Mm -hmm. The sidewalks are there, right? The sidewalks. So the existing sidewalks here, on this side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me. Oh, you talk about the main one. Okay. So before we jump on the main roundabout. Yes. Matt, Mad jumping ahead here, right? No, no, but we, we, we'll discuss it. Right? How, how do we see, how do we feel about
Festival Ground and Shotland. Acknowledge the presence of our Honorable Premier. Thank you for being with us, Premier. This way? Uh -huh. uh -huh. So the roundabout will address that. Right? The round. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. That we did. <laughs> we, we have the challenge with traffic lakes in this area is that you have multiple junctions. What traffic lakes do is stop traffic. So it's going to stop the traffic in a couple of those junctions to allow one or two to go. Right? Whereas around a boat, you just, keep, you just keep the flow. But yes, we did consider traffic lakes. Right? So I could complete these designs and ask the minister for some money? Okay. Good, good, good. The district rep says she goes along with what the people say. For the oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Question? Yes. have to always have a way to get to it to clean it right yeah okay it, it's a thought for sure it, mm -hmm. and it would it would be more aesthetically pleasing as well so that's something it'll be aesthetically pleasing prettier to cover it but we have to look at um, pleasing both sides of the coin right so that sounds like a green light to me. Plans beyond beyond the renderings? You mean detailed plans? You mean this to be shared? Oh, it, sure it can be. Okay. Okay. So 
So you want a sign in the area coming soon? Just something to circulate. Okay, 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 understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's not my expertise, but yes, they support. That, the minister would be. Yeah. I I think um, earlier a group represented themselves as a police traffic advisory. Um, there there are laws on the book that say you must be 16 years an older to operate a motorcycle, and you must have a M on your license. There's a process to go through that. You must wear a helmet. So I, I presume the advisory committee um, will speak with the commissioner and the, and the rest of the team and share the concerns brought by the, this, this public tonight about the lack of enforcement of those motorists and those motorcyclists. So. We are governed by laws in this territory, and we're hoping that we would get some assistance with the enforcement of making sure these psych motorcyclists adhere to uh, the, the laws. And to the parents, parents, when your children come home and they're operating a motorcycle, make sure that they have a license, make sure that the scooter is insured and licensed. It's only $35 to license a scooter um, 50 if you're a rental company, and I think the insurance was about $200. So make sure that your children are safe, uh, because when we see the accidents occur, um, you know, usually there, there is a lot of cost to making sure that they become well. So let us encourage them to be safe, ride safely, wear your helmets, and make sure that the cycles, the motorcycles are licensed. And they need two plates, one on the front and one on the back. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Uh, well, that, that is what it lies right now. If, if there is um, a concern, I think the community should probably try to come together. But in all fairness, I, my daughter, when she was 15 years old, and she, um, she started driving in the United States of America at 15, and she was given a provisional license. But as parents, we played a critical role in making sure that she was driving responsibly and make sure that she was safe on the roadways. I think the parents, I think 16 years is fine. If once they're taught to you know, respect the road rules, ride carefully, put on your safety, your safety gear, and make sure the scooters are licensed and insured, I, I, I think you know, that's the role that the parents should play in terms of that. But that is just my humble opinion. So, so we could we could work on getting those things in our schools as well. <laughs> okay. So we have to get the laws. 
about the school zones, uh, we've recently procured um, some school zone electronic signage, right? What they have with them are radars. So you see a screen as you approach the school zone area, along with a school zone sign, the screen limit for the area. And what that screen, like the South Ball field, screen it will show you the speed you're driving at if you're driving too fast it flashes slow down we procured two pairs as a pilot to trade out so you'll see them on the road shortly sort of like the so that's something that we'll be implementing to place in the school zones hopefully they work out pretty well and then we have in all those zones where we have the traffic to have some kind of, um, as we try to modernize our road traffic. Mm -hmm. Just a quick question, is the implementation already in place um, to have the, the, the speed limit modified at those times in those areas? That's another step. Well, while it may not, right? We're still going to do that for the time being to, in, to heighten safety in those areas in particular. Oh, 
Okay, what, what, what the chief China is saying is that the cross, these crosswalks should be closer to the median. So they cross in front of the traffic and not in the traffic. Okay? So. The, the problem with that is there is this um, invisible circle which is a safety hazard for, for any vehicle or pedestrians to be anywhere near that area. It's, it, all of this is a turning zone. So you, you don't want the crosswalk to be anywhere close to that. Turning area. This, so we have a lot of limitations in this area. So we came up with the, the best fit, and it, there's so many safety hazards we're just trying to get all the different sized vehicles to make this turn. <laughs> and if, if everybody, if everybody's scared to say it, I'll be the first to say it. If the trees are an impediment to making the thing work properly, move it and plant some other trees elsewhere. I mean, we, we, can't, we can't continue to try to force square pegs and wrong holes and expect good, good results. Sorry, I mean, that's just, that's just me. If the tree is your big problem, move the tree and make the thing work properly. Sorry. And, and I'll, let me just say one last item and I'll sit down while I'm here. We were talking earlier about where is the best place for the, um, the parking garage in this area. We have a proper site now where Altair Scatliff used to be. Shift the school over and put a parking garage that could solve all the needs for the wrong the surrounding area and make that work properly to where we are doing. The school could go, or just shift it over closer to the inner Scatliff school. That's it for my presentations this evening. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Hodge and your team. Uh, we have, I know we have some burning questions and some burning issues. This is the end of our presentations for this evening. We'll now open up the floor for some other concerns and if you want to make some further recommendations. But I want to say in my observation that all these agencies here are on the same track, don't you think? Their presentations were all similar. They didn't plan it together. They just came separately with their presentations, but they're all on the same track. And that is, they have the same vision and is to make a much, much improved capital for everyone to enjoy. We've made some notes. We're going to continue with having the discussions with all the agencies involved. And then we will come, as I mentioned, we, I know Jeremy recognized our Honorable Premier. He is the minister responsible for town and country planning. And then we have to have a holistic, a whole visual in terms of how we're going to present to you coming back, putting all the pieces together, including from what you just presented, what the advisory committee presented, what uh, Mr. Solomon presented, and Mrs. Brathwaite Edwards presented. Just bringing it in a holistic way and presenting it to you, you know, at one time. So we'll go back together to the drawing board, put it all together, and then come back to you with it. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure I've heard it tonight that you're all pleased with the presentations made, right? Let's hear a rounding yes, please. <laughs>
So it's encouraging. It's encouraging. And of course, the town and country planning will be there. Thank you for um, the elephant in the room, Greg. We needed to address that. <laughs> So now what we're going to do again is open up to other concerns, other issues that you want to raise tonight, bearing in mind our time, oh my gosh, time flies when you're having fun. We did say 7.30, it's minutes to eight. I will give it another 15 minutes, 20 minutes, actually it's minutes to eight, so 8.15 we can leave if there are any other burning issues, any concerns. I know we have some water issues. Mr. Brian Davies is here. He didn't have a presentation. Yes. Come. Um, before, I'm not sure if they're still around, but before I remember, like around um, Bobby Stretch, it used to have garbage. <laughs> On Bobby Stretch, right? It used to have garbage. I don't know if they're still there, but it used to have like green bins where you could actually your garbage, and then all of a sudden I don't see them anymore. With them being gone, it's kind of hard. It's kind of. It's kind of hard to find a garbage. Like, say you have trash in your hand, it kind of had you kind of stuck with that trash, especially as a walker. Yeah, they used to be on Bobby Stretch. I remember seeing a couple of them, but now they're not there. So, when you, as a walker, when you have trash, like, say you finish a water bottle or you finish your food, you know, stuck with it until either you reach home or you reach to an establishment that has a garbage, are they going to be bring back? Okay, um, as mentioned earlier, um, we are reviewing where we place bins. Uh, we are trying to have greater access to you by having house to house. And as I mentioned, we're trying to review or reduce the amount of public bins because the challenge is one is where we're going to place it. Sometimes we place it by private property, and after a while, the owners don't want the bins there. So we are looking at it. Um, every district could be different, um, but we are looking at it assessing where some of the bins are and what, where the bins are actually needed as well. Okay, thank you for that question. We're actually going to work with Mr. Solomon because we want some special bins in town because we're going to be enhancing our town area and beautifying it. Beautiful bins, yes. Any <laughs> Small ones, yes, because we're going, to have the, we're going to have the workers throughout the day empty in the bins and replenishing with plastic bags so that's the plan throughout the day sorry no i'm trying to come in but there was somebody in the back that's why i was looking in the back okay okay go ahead shana go ahead shana yes no no But that's, yeah, that's what I'm talking about as well. Okay. Remember in my presentation, I mentioned that we are looking at reviewing the designs of all our bins. Right? I mentioned, in fact, with respect to the recyclable bins, if, you, uh, if anyone saw the tender that went out, we asked for a redesign of that as well. We asked for the, we des uh, the design of it, because we're trying to make it as much as possible uh, look and feel like what tourists will see, right? So we are looking over the designs of the bins. Um, <laughs> Yes.
So there's a program supervisor that's supposed to be supervising um, that set of that operation, and that program supervisor also is supervised by a waste management officer, and the waste management officer for Totola is here, that is Mr. Allen. So he heard your comments as well, yes. Any other questions? The lady in the green there? Go ahead. Go ahead. The cultural center. Any plans, Honorable Reimer? Yeah, we're going to knock down the cultural center. Uh, see it come down soon. We, we have plans um, for a library, a performing arts center, a national archives, a whole consortium. Yeah. Andy, before you, the lady in the back. The lady in the back, Andy. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you're saying that you utilize the shuttles. So I guess we can look at how we can make sure that they're sustainable and they um, would be okay when it rains. But my DSA in the ministry, she could speak more on that in terms of maintenance or in terms of, of um, trying to, to get bigger ones, if need be. <laughs> okay, Andy, Miss Flex. And then you miss one. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. 
bill, okay, is not the house. I don't understand. Okay? Uh, before, before we leave, I have to do this thing. So, I have to pay $300 every month. Okay? This here too, the light bill. A thousand forty one dollars and whatever and thirty nine cents. Like this. Yes, a month. Last month was a thousand forty five dollars and something cents. I mean this is really, really ridiculous. Okay? Right. Thousand dollars. Okay. Mr. Davies, you want to address this, please? Well, the water side of it. Good night, everyone. Uh, Ms. Barnville, I particularly wasn't familiar with your situation, so I'll take a look at it and come back to you. Is that okay? Huh? Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm Brian Davis, the acting director of Water and Sewage. Obviously, predates my tenure, but I look into it. Okay. And thank Mr. Davies. He actually lives in Virgin Order, so he decided to stay down to be a part of our meeting tonight. Thank you, Mr. Davies. Any other questions, concerns? Ms. Prasad, I know you have a concern. Come, <laughs> please. Good evening. I am concerned about the pro proposed, sorry, I am concerned about the proposed change in the traffic, two lane tra change in the traffic from the junction of EA Creaky Store up to Joe's Hill. Now, this proposal is going to affect not only me, but the other business businesses in the area adversely, and particularly me at EA Creaky. We have two buildings, two commercial buildings, and if the traffic turns at EA Creaky, it means that people cannot get into my store safely, or maybe it may be non-existent, because the traffic will turn at my door. The second concern that I also have is that um, the, I would not be able to have a safe unloading area. The tenants upstairs and my businesses would not have a safe place to unload our goods. So therefore it makes it, uh, it would make our building, I must say, inoperable. So this is one of my main concerns. Again, at EA Creaky, we have tenants upstairs and we have provided designated parking for them. The designated parking is not enough. And if that is removed or, or the parking on the road is prohibited, it simply means that it would restrict economic activity. 
people come into the area, people who work in the area would not have that ability to park. So I want to know how the minister can help me and maybe the other businesses who are having these problems. Safe unloading, congestion, limited parking, it would affect my business or really shut us down completely. Because if you can't get into, the, into my store safely, then clearly you would not want to come. Thank you. That's in a Thank you, Ms. Passar. I'll allow Minister Reimer to answer that, please. Uh, thank you. Um, what we have discussed after um, seeing the concerns, um, we are So, so the plan is for the ministry to come out and have a, a sit-down dialogue with the business owners that are voicing their concerns pertaining to the new change um, in the flow of traffic. What I can tell you is, though, that um, we, are, like, we are working on the implementation of having paid parking in the city. So most definitely persons would not be able to park all day unless they're going to pay for it. Um, with whatever the changes are. So I, I could just say that publicly, that persons would probably need to use the alternate site, and we should try to get persons, you're speaking about the, the people that work in your building. Um, there's also a concern from the business owners that I, uh, Honorable and I, we spoke to quite a few um, just a couple days ago who complain about those persons park from morning till night, and it's affecting people coming to their stores as well. So we, we do, we, we are going to sit down and have the dialogue as to how we can work forward and move forward to this. But in the interim, public work will still work on enhancing the, the pedestrian parking so that we can make sure that there's a, a safe um, roadway for, for the pedestrians. I'm sorry, the, the, the sidewalks. Well. Well, I, I just mentioned, yes. But right now it's basically used as a two-way street because people park on the side of the street all day. Okay, so we'll have the discussion. Um, um, my permanent secretary will get back to you or whether through the city manager. But right now we just would look at, at how it operates. But right now it is a two-way two -way, two -way road anyway because persons park all day on the one side of the street. Marilyn and then 
this is the last question for the night. <laughs> Suggestion, yes, please. <laughs> we have a we have a traffic unit in the police force. Yes, there's a traffic unit in the police force. Yes. So if there is a traffic unit, then there should be persons out here. You understand? It's easy the congestion. There should be people out here issuing tickets, and once these tickets are issued, then that can actually generate funds for the country. So it's actually a win-win situation. I mean, nobody wants to pay a ticket of two hundred and fifty dollars. You understand me? And that, like I say, can generate more for the economy. So maybe what we need to do, or maybe what Mr. Creaky, I think, that's the gentleman here. Hello, Mr. Creaky. I know you're not, but maybe you can give a suggestion. Maybe what they can do is get more persons. Oh, this is what you're talking about. I just want to add what you're saying is basically what we are trying to achieve. Because even right now, we have signs that say no parking, but you see cars park right under the sign, and there is no enforcement. So, okay, so. so so there are enforcement then. Okay. So so I take that back police council. So so with the with the change in the legislation, right? We'll have metered and paid parking. That, that is the plan for that. So we are hoping to... Marilyn, you want to say what you, yeah, please. those suggestions and I think this young lady here was the last question uh, K and then the last one okay after, you're the last one the young lady K and um, Janet Beth Janet that's it come and that's it. We had a cut off 
Bobby's. Bobby's is my biggest concern. <laughs> um, Bobby's is my biggest concern, especially especially how town is our most attracted tourist area. Bobby's presentation and how they store their stuff and how the area be looking is not very pleasant. And that area smells high. For a supermarket where you buy your meat, your other groceries, it does not smell right, it does not look right, and it turns you off from going there. I don't know if it can be moved. I don't know if something could cover it up, but something needs to be done because even though it's a very nice place to go to because it's in town, it just, do, it just turns me off from going there all together. And also, um, since we're talking about the area looking pretty and stuff, the garbage bins, just like the one by the marketplace, would be a nice one to put around the areas, alongside Bobby's Stretch, alongside Banco Popular, all um, where the food stores are, and stuff like that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and then Janet, and then we're done. Travel through there and oh, sorry, you asked for the premiere. Sorry, let me pass this to the Minister of Communications. Yeah, thank you for the question. But, um, the, the board, the board, um, I think they are working on the plans for it. But let me get the information and then I could, I could report to you on what the plans are for that. Okay. All right, thank you. There is a noise abatement act, yes, and it enforcement again is police. <laughs> the enforcement is police. We're gonna have to, yes, we're gonna have to have a meeting with the police one of these days. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, our viewing audience as well. To my panel here, thank you so much for your contribution to the technicians. To my committee members who are here with me, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to work together, right? We're going to work together to transform our capital, correct? And I look forward to everyone playing their role so that we can have a beautiful capital 
in the very near future. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Dorian. Very near future. <laughs> we will have it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. We will have more district meetings. Yes, this is the first one, but we will have more and regularly.